Greetings everybody out there on YouTube. This is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. And I'm not a bass player, but I play one on TV or YouTube. Anyways, we're going to be doing a rundown of some of the best beginner basses for you today, starting with this one from Fender. Now, Fender Subbrand Squire has long been an affordable brand from Fender guitars made overseas to bring the Fender designs and expertise in building electric guitars and basses into a price point for beginners and those looking to stay within a budget. The jazz bass from Fender goes back many, many years. We should probably go back a little bit further in talking about the P bass, because you see, when we're talking about electric basses, and that's the, the, the instrument that brings the thickness, the thump, the rhythm, the drive to the band, whenever you are seeing someone bobbing their head to a beat, that's because of you guys. It's because of the bass players. It's all about the bass today. And we can thank Fender for that. So prior to the P bass, all we had were upright basses. And upright basses are cool, but it was very difficult to amplify them. And so back in the 50s, Leo Fender invented the P bass. And with that, ushered in a whole new era for bass players. It's really its own unique instrument. Taking an electric guitar, expanding the scale, putting thick, uh, strings on there, playing at a lower uh, octave, and just bringing that thump, that drive, that rhythm to a band. And uh, from the P bass, back in the 60s, Fender then introduced the jazz bass with a different design and kind of taking that P bass shape and pulling it apart, kind of like a Gumby bass, if you will. And thus was born this offset design. It's classic. We've seen it all over the place for many, many years. And here it is at an affordable price point from Squire. Now this is the Squire Affinity Jazz Bass. It's a four string model that is available for about $199.99 exactly as of today, uh, which is June 2017. But uh, it's a fantastic bass guitar. It's available here on its own. You can also look at uh, packs that uh, they have. And we're gonna give you kind of a rundown of what you can expect on a jazz bass because for the most part, a lot of these specs are going to be the same as you move up the line, um, but they you know, strip down things that they can or they need to and do manufacturing overseas in order to get to a price that appeals to you, the beginner. So it's a jazz bass, offset body. It's a 34 inch uh, scale neck, uh, maple neck, rosewood fingerboard, big ol' uh, clover tuners up here. Down here we have two single coil jazz pickups. You have two volumes and then a master tone going through this bridge here. On this particular model, the strings do not go through the body, they anchor in the bridge and then pull forward over the saddles. So here's the control layout. You've got your bridge pickup and your kind of mid to neck pickup. This is going to have a brighter tone to it and you control the blend by these two volumes. The forward one is, of course, your mid pickup, which is going to have the warmest tone. The aft is the bridge pickup, which is going to have the brightest tone and will really cut through the mix. And then you have a master tone. When Fender came out with the jazz bass, that was really the idea. The, the P bass has this round kind of thumpy sound, which you'll hear, but the jazz bass allows you a bit more variation in the tone and allows you to cut through the mix and really get a brighter tone when you need to. There's been a lot of famous jazz players who have played these over the years, and they really are a fantastic uh, guitar if you are getting into bass. Four string models, what I would recommend if you're starting out, learn these four, graduate to more. So what we've got this running through today is Fender's Rumble 200 bass amp. It's an extremely popular bass amp, both for gigging musicians and beginners alike. Not a very expensive amp with a lot of controls and very, very lightweight. Pushing up to 200 watts of power through a single 15, it has a really rich tone to it. So we've got this Affinity Jazz bass going through this Rumble, and we're going to just kind of run through a few things so you can hear what the pickups sound like and compare it to the basses behind me.
Next up in our All About the Bass review is a bass from Ibanez. Now, Ibanez is making great bass guitars, have for a very long time. And along with Fender, they comprise most of the bass market, particularly in the lower uh, to mid-priced market of bass guitars. The GSR 200 is a fantastic value. Same price as the Affinity, it's $199.99. Again, check online for the latest pricing because it is subject to vary. But what it does is it brings a lot of the, uh, the thump and the feel of like a jazz bass uh, in a smaller, more svelte, thinner, lighter design with some add-ons for the modern bass player. So we have a mahogany body that's very lightweight. We have a 34-inch scale again, rosewood fingerboard, maple neck, just like the Affinity. Uh, we have two on a side tuners, so it's a straight string pull. Um, and down here we have four controls, a little bit different than the setup we had before, as well as the pickups being different. So what you'll notice is this straight pickup here, and then these two staggered pickups here. These are in the industry known as P and J pickups, and yes, they're hearkening back to the Fender pickups of yore. When I say Fender, invented the bass guitar, I really mean Fender invented the bass guitar, the electric bass guitar. So the first pickup is a P-style pickup for a precision bass. It's the style of pickup that was originally seen on the 50s uh, P basses from Fender guitars. And it's got kind of a fat, round sound to it, and given its p uh, placement and position on the guitar, it's going to give you that really thick, low-end sound, a very round sound that kind of adds a good foundation to the, the mix, if you will, for the song that you're playing. Down here toward the bridge, we have a familiar pickup that we saw on the previous guitar, and that is a single coil jazz style pickup. Now, given the design that it has and its proximity to the bridge, it's going to have a brighter uh, tone that cuts through a bit more. So things for like funk, for a uh, slap, or if you just need that driving sound. It's particularly great if you need overdrive on a, on a uh, song and you need it to kind of push and cut through a little bit more rather than just being um, the foundation for the, the sound of the band. In addition, we've got two volume controls like we saw. We have a master tone that affects both pickups. And then on this one, we have a EQ. Now this is a powered EQ. Both pickups are passive. They're not active pickups. What this does is it increases the EQ curve really for the low end and increases the overall gain of the guitar. And I'll demonstrate that for you as we begin to play it, where when it's turned down it, and then you turn it up, it increases the volume substantially, but it also brings out more of the low end side of the bass guitar, which is fantastic regardless of which pickup you're using, and can be used to kind of drive an amp a little bit more if you want an overdriven sound and maybe have an amp that can't do that, or you don't want to have to be switching. You want to set the amp and turn it up as need be to kind of get it to drive a little bit more. All right, so the next bass guitar is this beautiful ambered color bass that I have here in my lap. And this is a Tobias design bass from Epiphone Guitars. Now, Michael Tobias has been making fantastic high-end basses for many, many years. And a while back, he licensed his designs to Epiphone so that Gibson could bring his designs uh, to the market at a lower price point for us bass players to enjoy. I say us because I already feel like I'm part of your community, guys. So this is a fantastic guitar. The body is made out of a material they call radiata. Not quite sure what that wood is, so but it feels nice and light and sounds good. Uh, it's a hard rock maple neck and it is a 34 inch scale rosewood bridge or fingerboard on top of there. Low profile 
uh, bridge here, and then two uh, Tobias Design humbucking uh, double rail pickups here. So they look like the single coil pickups we saw on the Jazz uh, the Jazz uh, base as well as the Ibanez, but they are uh, basically narrow humbucking pickups. So they have a bit more oomph to them, a bit more um, low end and gain to them already. Now the layout for the controls is a little bit different and actually very player friendly, I think. Rather than having two different volumes, you have a single volume control and then you have a blend knob that allows you to go all the way to the bridge, all the way to the, the neck pickup or in between with a center detent to let you know when you are smack dab in the middle. You have a master tone and then you have uh, basically like an EQ or drive knob just like we saw on the Ibanez. And that's right here. As you increase this expander knob um, or tone expressor, uh, then it's going to increase the gain as well as uh, the bass side to really, again, drive the amp or just thicken the sound for you. On this, from the get-go, before you turn that up, it's already a thicker sound because of those humbucking pickups. It's a very thin neck, it's a light design, and it looks killer. Um, the price point on this is $269. So it's a very good looking bass guitar for not a lot of money and it plays really well. Okay, so for our next guitar, we're returning back to the roots of the Fender Jazz Bass. This time, though, it's a bit of an upgrade from the one we started with. This is the Squire Vintage Modified 1977 Jazz Bass. So it's based on the 70s Jazz Bass, or specifically the 77 Jazz Bass, but uh, modified with some modern improvements like with the pickups and made by Squire to bring it in at that price point for the beginner. This bass clocks in at $349 currently. Again, check online for the latest pricing on it. But it's a great value and a huge upgrade. Really, it's a fantastic bass if you're starting out, even if you're in a band and you haven't been playing bass that long, this is a great bass. I know bass players who tour Europe and rather than take their vintage bass over there, they have one of these. You know, and they take that with them. It's great enough to gig with. Nice and light. And one of the, the best features of this, in addition to just the gorgeous look, uh, it comes in a variety of colors. The sunburst uh, color is great. It also has this awesome amber colored with this beautiful clear finish on it is the neck. The neck is finished on the top and the back with a maple fingerboard block inlays on this 34 inch scale. And it feels fantastic. Um, some people don't like kind of gloss finish necks on the back. On a bass, I like it a lot, and particularly with a jazz bass. Now there's something to be said for the offset body in the neck of a jazz bass that is unique to these basses, jazz and P bass specifically, is that it's a much narrower nut than most bass guitars you're going to find. So if you have smaller hands, you are going to find this to be a lot more comfortable than a lot of the wider neck bass guitars that are out there. Now there's another side to that as well. Sometimes if you're trying to play certain types of bass songs, you might need the extra space. So that's why it's good to come into a music store and put this in your hand. But I have always kind of been partial to a jazz bass, the nut width and the profile of the neck, a modern C profile with a 9.4 inch radius on the fingerboard for this one. So it screams just good looks. Um, it's the same layout we saw before, so it's got two single coil jazz pickups, one in the neck, one in the bridge position, a uh, volume for each, and then a master tone control. So let's check it out and compare it to that affinity.
Okay, so this bass represents really where it all started. This is a Fender Squire Classic Vibe 50s Precision Bass, or colloquially known as the P Bass. And this really is where it started, and you can kind of tell when you look at this bass. It is beautiful, but aesthetically trimmed down at the same time. We have a 34 inch scale, one piece maple neck. So the frets are right into the maple neck. It's got a C profile, uh, vintage style tuners open back, and it has a blonde finish that's transparent where you can see through to the pine body. This is pine. And what's interesting about that is the original Telecasters and P basses back in the 50s were also pine. They were not ash, they were not alder. It has a high mass uh, bridge with brass saddles on it, which again, harkens back to some of those early Telecasters. Very similar construction here. It's got a single volume, a single tone with these knurled metal knobs, a finger rest and a single split coil pickup. So split coil in that there's two magnets wound one way, two magnets ma uh, wound another way. It's in right here in the middle for that big thick P bass sound. So this is a reproduction in the Squire namesake of those early 50s P basses. It's got this uh, this early headstock design and it's it's just awesome. Now one thing about kind of how I've been playing and again I'm not a bass player normally, but what you see here is something from the original bass players. I've been playing with my fingers, which is typical in modern bass. You typically would mount, kind of anchor your thumb, and you'd play with your fingers. Not so from the early bass players of the 50s. They would anchor their fingers and kind of play with their thumbs. So that's why that's there, just kind of a, a nod to yesteryear, and a lot of bass players still play that way or with a pick whatnot. So it's kind of a cool throwback and really a cool design overall. Price on this bad boy is right at $399.99, so it's a $400 bass. For $400, you get the top, really, of the Squire line. The classic vibe stuff is fantastic. It's some of the best values on the market. If you are looking for something that is made very well, feels great, and has that vintage aesthetic and design to it, you really can't go wrong with anything from Squire in their Classic Vibe series. Okay, so the last bass on our list is a new bass from Fender as part of their Mustang lineup that they introduced last year. Now, we've done some reviews on the awesome Mustang guitars and the Duo Sonics and whatnot. The Mustang basses are fantastic. It's the most expensive one on our list, clocking in at $574.99, so $575 for this bass guitar. Part of the reason for that it is a Fender. It's not a Squire, and it is made in Mexico, not overseas in China or Indonesia or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it does cost a little bit more, and it brings with it some fantastic quality. Now, a unique feature about this bass is that it is short scale. Every bass that we've looked at up to this point has been a 34 inch scale length. That means from the nut down to the saddles has been 34 inches. This is 30 inches, which may not sound like a huge difference, but four inches on a guitar is a lot. And it's only about five inches longer than a typical Strat or Telecaster. So this guitar has some unique attributes that make it ideal for a few people. If you're short, if you are a child, and so you need a smaller bass guitar, a, a full size is too big for you, or if you're a guitar player who also plays bass, the reach between the, the frets is going to be a lot closer. There's, there's, there's less reach than on a normal bass guitar. So 
these also are just comfortable. I mean, they're, they're awesome, okay? The other part of it is you've got this wonderful rosewood fingerboard and this pickup combination, which we've seen on the Ibanez as well as on the Tobias. That is the PJ combination. So we have a p base pickup in the middle position and a jazz pickup closer to the bridge. Now on this one, we only have a single volume and a single tone. So you're saying, I know Chris, like how do I switch between them? I know, that's what this doohickey's for. You might read something weird on some website like fender.com or something that it's called a three-way toggle, but it's called the bass doohickey, okay? You heard it here first. In the up position, you've got the P pickup in both, or in the middle position, you have both, and down position is going to be the bridge pickup. So you really have a lot of versatility in a smaller package built in Mexico with a great look to it. And it's available in a few different finishes. So I happen to love this Olympic white finish. Red, I think, is the other color they're producing at this time for this guitar. And they're so popular that we've had a hard time keeping them in stock. So that should give you an idea about how awesome of a bass this really is. And something that has kind of come and gone from the Fender ca uh, catalog over the years. So I'm really glad that Fender's decided to bring the Mustang bass back to us in this form. There's lots of great bass guitars that are out there, but if you are looking to start playing bass, or in some cases, you want to add a new bass to your arsenal and you're already a player, these are some of the basses that you should consider, particularly this one on that latter point. If you have any questions on these, I want you to comment on the video, come into the store, give us a call, email us, you know, carrier pigeon, whatever you need to do, because we want to do what we need to do to get a guitar in your hands, make music, bring joy to others, and get the thump going. So. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.